Good day. This is Teresa Federicks from Growing Businesses Using Projects, bringing you yet another video, this time on building the GAN chart using Microsoft Excel. My intent with all these videos is to ensure that the ordinary man can understand what is being taught and apply it. Today, we're going to format the sheet, headings, tasks, and calendar. I'm going to set up the word breakdown structure format. I'm going to create a table for holidays. I'm going to use the workday function to get to the finished dates of tasks. I'm going to use the weekday function to color weekends using conditional formatting. I will color holidays manually and I'll create a Gantt chart manually. So this is the WBS part of the Gantt chart that we will be creating. And this is the Gantt chart part. So let's get started. So we are in Microsoft Excel. And I have gone ahead and done some formatting. I've put a project, a Kim's Farm project. It has three sub-deliverables. And of course, as Microsoft Project will have the project summary task. You could think of that as the top of the of the hierarchical structure in the WBS because it, it it has everything in the project in terms of duration, cost, everything. It is the summary task of the project. It summarizes all of the project. I have the WBS code, duration, start date, predecessors, resources. Now, the farm project is the main project. This project has three sub deliverables. Normally, we'll call them work packages. So that if it was a house, the number one might have been the foundation, number two might have been the walls, etc. How do you do the WBS schools? We start at the top and you number one, write it down. You may not have to number them if number it if you're doing it because it's already numbered in, it, in, in this column here but i renumbered it again for it to stand out so what do you do project summary is number one I didn't have it a problem, really. project summary is number one the first deliverable sub deliverable would be one one Task one would be one, one, one. Task two would be one, one, two. Task three would be one, one, three. And then we end every sub deliverable with a milestone. That is so that is why I put summary complete. It has no duration, but it is used to link back one, one sub deliverable to another. All right, so that that's the end of sub deliverable number one sub deliverable number two will be one two that is at the heading and each of its tasks will take that heading one two one one two two one two three one two four and now we answer three so it will be one three see how easy it is one 0 0.3.1, 1 1.3.2, 1.3.3, and 1.3.4. So that is how the numbering is. And it's very easy and very easy to understand. Now, there are, there are the formulas that you can put in to get it, but they are a bit complicated. And I feel this is a simple thing for anybody to understand. So now we're going to look at predecessor. This is task one. Task one is going to be the first task. So it is right at the edge. So there's no predecessor. What about task two? Task two comes after one, 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 one. So you have one, 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 and the, what you take is the one in the corner. You take the number. So it will be five, number five. Task 3, the predecessor, would be number 6. The summary task, the predecessor, would be number 7. But really, the summary task is just at the end of 7 because it's zero. It's just a marker. 
that now you have second sub sub the second second task you have task one task one now goes back to eight you don't ever link to a summary a sub deliverable you link to the last one in of the task so it is going to be eight but task two is going to be ten I'm sure I hope you're following me task one linking back to the milestone but task two is going to be ten and task three is going to be eleven and task 12 again we're going to put 12 but it's just semantics because it's really at just the end and now you have task one of one three again you came back to the milestone so the predecessor is going to be 13. task two the predecessor is going to be 15 and task three the predecessor is going to be 17. and again Sorry, 13, that's to 15, that's three will be 16, and that's four, 17. Now let's do the weekly formula to get the finish date. We were using, we we're going to put an equal, and we're going to use work date. And then we're going to put open brackets and what's asking for is the start date holidays. And let me just go and look out the holidays first. So we'll do a table for the holidays. The holidays. Is the 9th and the 3rd, 2023. And the 15th and the 3rd. 2023. All right. To do a table, you just block it. You go to insert table. Insert table. Then you click on this little dialog box and the table is created. And then you, I would just call it holidays. All right. So I went up there and I called it holidays. Good. So let's go back now and do the finish date. So you're using the workday formula. Open a brackets. And they ask for the start date. This is the start date. They ask, and you put a comma. But before we go on, let me tell you something about the workday. Excel does not count, count the day. So that if you say the first, it will start counting from the second. So if you want to it to come from the first, you have to put minus one. So that is the only adjustment you have to make. And then it asks for the day, the duration, you put a comma after that too. And then it asks for the holidays. And you will realize that it took the table. And when you click it, you get what you get is a number because numbers. Dates are numbers in Excel, so we now have to convert it. How we convert it, we click on it, we go into number, we go into date, and we pick a date. Long format because we want it long, we want the whole thing. We got it like that because it, okay, it was too short, small, too big for the column, that is why it had that. Then you, you put your, your mouse here and you drag right down, you are copying that formula now you may ask why it is we get in these numbers because this has no start date and finish date so you just block it out what happened is a formula again a very complicated one but you don't need it so now you have gotten your end date it's sometimes good to see what you do wrong eh? what happened i was getting the same date here and now i realize i did not put any duration for these last two so I'm going to put it in now. So always check. All right. And you realize you get the proper days, 23rd, 22nd, and the 30th. All right. Okay. Let me quick tell you very quickly how I set up this calendar. 
I put in the long date and then I went into format cells and custom and I chose day and month so you get a short date. Then I went up here and I chose round up so you got it vertical. Now how I got the date above it? Once you get the first date, you wait until you get that and you just go on and you'll get consecutive dates coming up. How you get the date above it? You, you go in, into the F function. This will come up. You go to date and time and then you look in for the weekday. The weekday, you get that and it's asking you for a number. The number you're looking for is the first number. You put that in and what you would get is uh, another number. So now we just want to block out the holidays, the week, week, weekdays. So we go to the conditional formatting and we go to new rule, click here. And the rule is equal weekday, open bracket. And what we're going to be using again is the first date. So you will click here and then you're going to put a comma that close brackets more than five. But before you go on, I want you to come here and move this first dollar sign. All right. So then you go to format and you go to fill red. Okay. Okay. So now what we have, it is going to be in that cell. And what we're going to have to do is to copy it from this cell right across and paste. And you see you get your, your Saturday and Sunday. I'll finish it off. So now you have all your Saturdays and Sundays marked off. And I'm going to go and color code the, the, the holidays because um, so I'm going to put a green on the night just okay, let me just come back. the ninth was a holiday yes so we're going to put a green on it and the 15th was a holiday we're going to put a green on it it's very easy because it's three days for this task one so you're blocking three days you, you just go in and let us get a different color for it. And then three, um, task two is three days. So you go here, that's two. And then you go here, that's three. And this is all you're doing to, to, to get the WBS. So we need to one time. Okay, I went ahead and finished it. The project start date is 32. The um, duration of the project is 32. It's, it's, you will check the first, the start of the first and the finish of the last task. Each summary task, the start of it and the finish of it. So and so the summary task, one summary task is 12, one 13, one summary task is 12. One is 12, one is 13 and one is 12. What you can do, you can go through and you can fix it up even better. All right, but I think you got everything and I think it was very, um, you, you could have seen more better what was done. You could go ahead and do some more formatting and things like that. Okay. That's it. Good day. If you like it, give me a thumbs up.